All right, so we've got things set up so that options are dynamically appearing now when we reach a branch and dialog, but when we click on them, not much is happening. In this video, we're gonna set things up so that we can choose different paths in the conversation and actually have a new dialog appear. And the good news is this is actually not all that difficult. So let's get started. So first off, I'll just explain what we'll be doing in this video. So if you open up your dialog canvas and your options panel, what we wanna do is set up each of our option buttons so that they call a method in our dialog manager and then pass in the information of which button's been pressed. So to make this happen, we get you to head down into your project menu, open up your dialog folder, go into scripts and open the advanced dialog manager. All right, once we're here, we're gonna take a quick stop down in our play dialog method. And we just want to scroll down below the if else statement here where we set all of our buttons to be active. And all that we wanna do here is make it so that when our buttons appear, the first button is auto selected. Later on, we'll make it so that we can use our arrow keys then to toggle between them and we won't need the mouse at all. Now getting that first button selected is pretty simple. We just need to do option button zero, which will be the first button. Then we're gonna get the button component. And finally, we just do dot select and this function will make it auto selected. Now we're ready to actually get some input from the buttons and have our dialogue change based on that. Now to do this, we're gonna make a brand new method. I'm gonna put mine down just below my set actor info. And we're just gonna make this a public. It does need to be public, otherwise the button won't be able to talk to it. And we'll just make it an option method. And then in the brackets, we're gonna pass in an integer called option number. And this is just where the button itself will let it know which button has been chosen so it knows which dialog to select. Now, once we've selected a button, the first thing we wanna do is just make all of the buttons inactive. That way you can't accidentally click two buttons and have some weird things happening. So we're gonna use a for each loop. You can just type for each, then double tap tab. And what we wanna do here is just go through each game object we'll call these game object buttons in our option button array. So it'll just scroll through each of the option buttons. Now for each button in the array, it will take that button and set it active as false. You can then remove those extra brackets if you like, just to keep things nice and clean looking. Now all that remains is to load data based on which buttons pushed. So if option num equals zero, remember option num is the information being passed in from our button, which we'll set up in Unity in a second. So if the first button is chosen, we're gonna set our current conversation to be a new piece of data. It won't be the conversation we're currently in. Instead, it's gonna look on our NPC dialog and it's gonna look for whatever scriptable object we've put as option zero. That data will now be loaded as the current conversation and we can play it. Now, the next thing to do, of course, is just to repeat this for each of our options. You'll need to change which option num is being passed in and also don't forget to change which current conversation dot option number we are currently gonna be reading. All right, we've loaded the information, but at this point, nothing would play if we ran our game. And that's just because we are stuck at the current step number that we were in in our last conversation, in my case, step three, and my new dialog only has one step. So I need to just make sure that when we load this new data, we also set our step num back to zero. And that's all we need to do. Now, when we push the interact key, play dialog will be called, but this time it'll loop through our new option dialog. Now we do have a little setup left to do in Unity. So let's open up our dialog canvas, expand the options panel and click on the first option. You'll notice here that we have the ability to change what happens when we push a key. For example, if I select left, I can choose for it to go to option four. And if I select the right key, it can go to option two. You can just cycle through each of your options and decide what you would like it to go to if you push left or right. And now our keys will be enabled. Next, we wanna actually connect these option buttons to our script. So you can just click on the first option, hold down shift and click the bottom one to select them all. And all we wanna do here is make it so that on click, it talks to our dialogue manager. So we'll just drag the dialogue manager object here. Now we'll go to each button one at a time. So starting with option one, we want to select the advanced dialogue manager script. Then we can go over to the options method. You'll notice it looks for us to put in an integer here. And since it's the first option, we wanna pass a zero. You may be noticing a little problem here. I named my options starting at one instead of zero, and that's gonna get confusing. So I'm just gonna quickly reset those so that it starts at zero and works its way up to three. All right, with that done, we can now just make it so that each button is set up to pass in the correct integer. So option zero will pass in a zero. 
And then with option one, we can also select the advanced dialogue manager, go to options, and this time pass in a one. And we'll do that for our other two buttons as well. Now, but there's just two more things we want to do before we can test this. First of all, right now when your options display, you will be using the interact key to make them display, but then you'll have to switch to either the enter key or the mouse button in order to actually select them. And we want your interact key to work for everything. So we're going to go to edit, project settings, and then in your input manager, we just want to first of all find your interact key and figure out what button that is. In my case, it's L. Then go to your submit button and make sure that either your positive button or alt positive button are the same letter. You'll notice my alt is L. That way I can move through dialogue with L, interact with my NPC, and select buttons. Now the other thing you're going to want to do is just quickly head to your dialogue folder in your dialogue scriptable objects and make sure your conversation is fully set up. It needs to have option text as well as a scriptable object for each of the options you want to have available. Then just make sure that your options themselves have dialogue as well as an actor selected. You'll notice here mine does not and so I'm going to add one right now. Alright, so you can now approach your NPC, start the dialogue using your interact key, advance through, use arrows to select different options. Now you'll notice my player is moving as I push these buttons and don't worry we'll fix that in the next tutorial. And we can actually select an option here using our interact key and we get dialogue that is dynamically chosen based on our option. All right, we now have a fully functional branching dialogue system. There's still a lot of nice features we'd like to add like freezing our player during dialogue as well as things like adding a typewriter effect so that the text is displayed one character at a time. We'll get to those in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.